MMA Fight Corner. Now, speaking of big time guys, we've got a big time fighter with us. Uh, he is going to be fighting in the co main event of RFA 12 coming up January 24th. This is Billy Crash Daniels. Billy, thanks for joining us today on the MMA Fight Corner. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. How are you? Great. Hey, sorry you had a little trouble there calling in. I heard the phone line was giving you an issue. Sorry about that. It's, man. it's all the traffic on the phone line, Billy. We, ap- we apologize. Uh, no problem. So let's get right into it here. You are the co-main event at RFA 12. You're fighting Pedro Munoz, who's defending his bantamweight title. Uh, This is your first fight with RFA, and you've got yourself right in the title shot. How does that feel to you to get that opportunity? Uh, It feels good. You know, it's a big opportunity. And uh, when they they called me, we didn't really expect them to give me a title shot right off the bat. We kind of thought that they'd build me up, but they told me who the opponent would be, and I... You know, I talked to my coaches and stuff, and we decided it was a good idea and we couldn't pass up the opportunity, so I'm pretty excited. Excellent. And Pedro, again, he's a Black House product. He's undefeated, just as you are. Why are you the guy to go in there and take his belt? Uh, I just I think, you know, no one knows who I am, and uh, I think I have the right style. I'm bigger. Uh, I'm taller. I think I'm going to be able to use my range. Uh, I think a lot of people fight him scared, you know. A lot of guys go in there and they've already lost when they get in there because they're scared of him because of who he trains with and he's a black belt and this and that. But, you know, I'm not scared of that stuff and I'm I'm going to go in there and fight to win. I'm not going to be tentative and let him implement his game plan and push the pace. Well, yeah, you, like you said, you're a young guy. You're 21 years old. You're uh, out of Utah, and you train over at the Ironclad Gym. Uh, I believe that's also the gym of uh, a Bellator uh, tournament finalist, Travis Marks. Uh, talk about what your gym has really done to help prepare you for this uh, this fight that you have ahead of you. Um, yeah, Travis trains here. Um, he moved recently just moved back from Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he was training with Greg Jackson. And uh, he's been coming in. He prepped for his last two fights here with us, and then he's been helping us get ready for all of our fights. And uh, basically what we, we just, you know, we kind of take advantage of him when he's here, and we work on my counter-wrestling and my takedown defense and the counter-jiu-jitsu aspects of it. And he's built about like Pedro. He's a little bit thicker, a little more muscular, but uh, he's the same height and everything. And then on the weekends, we go out to the city and we roll with some black belts, uh, Eddie Edmonds, of Fusion Academy Jiu-Jitsu, and he's got a couple black belts out there. And every weekend we go out there, and I get one-on-one time with him. And uh, we're just, you know, taking full advantage of the time that we have and trying to be 100% ready for this fight. Yeah, and in this fight, the both of you seem to be very well versed with your submission game. You have, uh, I think, let's see, four or five submissions already collected to your record, and uh, Pedro, pretty much the same. So, how do you see yourself pairing up against him when it comes to the ground game? Uh, I think you know I'll be fine. I think if it was like a pure jujitsu match, obviously he's going to have a little bit of an edge. But uh, I think in the MMA aspect, I'm right up there with him. You know, it's a different game when you add in punches and takedowns and kicks and the different scrambles that come with with MMA. And I think that's where I'm going to be able to capitalize on him is I'm going to have better scrambles and uh, I'm going to be able to utilize the MMA a little bit more than he's going to be able to use his jiu-jitsu. Billy, Dave Carney here. Now, you're fighting for the first time in RFA, which is considered by, by many to be the top feeder league to the UFC. And, and Pedro's fighting in his fourth fight in the RFA promotion. When you look at the opportunity here, as Heidi alluded to, you're a young guy, 21 years old, but you've got a great record, 7-0. and When you look at the opportunity to fight RFA and really put yourself in a position to be noticed by the guys at the UFC, how exciting of an opportunity for you is this? It's very exciting, you know it- it's an honor that they would think that, you know, they think highly enough of me to put me in a main event right off the bat and fight somebody like Pedro. And then just that the fact that the UFC is going to be watching, that's just the, you know, the cherry on top. That's, I couldn't ask for a better opportunity. And, you know, hopefully this fight goes well. I come home with a W and Dana White calls me shortly afterwards. From what I understand, uh, you had actually auditioned for the Ultimate Fighter's 18th season, and I believe Pedro did also. And uh, I had heard something like you had actually caught the eye of Dana and Sean Shelby already. So uh, how did how did that come about, and what was that experience like auditioning for the show? 
It was good. I don't know if I'd already caught the eye of him before I went out there, but uh, we went out there. I was only 20 years old. We knew I was too young, but I had another teammate that was going out and trying out, so we figured I'd go too. And, and worst case scenario, they turned me away at the door. Best case scenario, I'd get to hit pads and do all that stuff for them. And uh, luckily, they didn't catch my age till the interview process, so I made it past all the skills and uh, got to you know be interviewed by Dana White and all those guys. And so I got to meet them. And uh, it was it was a good experience, you know. It sucked that I wasn't old enough, you know. I wish that uh, I wish the age limit was different because I feel like I could have been on the show and I feel like I could have done well. Um, but yeah, you know, it was just we had to take advantage of an opportunity to get my face out there, so we just did what we had to do. Well, you are an actual uh, a former champion of our MFC, and uh, from what I understand, you were the featherweight champion there. So, is this the first time that you're fighting at bantamweight? Yep, this is the first time I'm fighting at Bantamweight. I've always been a small featherweight. Um, it just It's hard to find Bantamweight fights here in Utah. There's not a lot of smaller guys. Featherweight just made more sense. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of guys around the 45, 55-pound weight class. So we just we just stayed at featherweight where we could get fights and uh, fights that made sense. But if there was more people at 35, I would have started my career there. But with this opportunity, you know, it's, it's going to be easy for me to make 35, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Great. And do you do anything differently in your preparation, trying to prepare not just for a different weight cut, but for a five round fight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were actually prepping for a fight when RFA called me. I was getting ready to fight here locally and uh, my guy dropped out because of an injury. And then uh, I think a week later or so, I got the call from RFA. So I was already two or three weeks into a training camp when they called me. So we just kept it running from there. I've had to change my diet a little bit because at 45, like I said, I made it pretty easy. I could, you know, sneak in McDonald's when I wanted to and have a cheeseburger here and there. But now it's, I have to be pretty strict with my diet. So we've made a little bit of changes. And then uh, we just up the rounds with our sparring and all of our grappling and stuff to get ready for five rounds. Well, I was I was going to say, Billy, in, in Colorado, I mean, especially, I mean, you probably get killed just for eating the McDonald's. They're like, no, 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 stay much, uh, you know, much healthier. And you know, I, I want to ask you about Colorado for a second here, because the Rocky Mountain Fight Championship, who, who you fought in, it looks like a five times uh, out of your seven fights. It, it seems to be a pretty good league to get somebody like yourself some notice. So can you share with our listeners out here in Las Vegas what the Rocky Mountain Fight Championship is all about? Uh, yeah, it's the Rocky Mountain Fight Championship is just a, a show based here in Vernal, Utah. Um, the guy that started it was actually the, my first MMA trainer, and he started it right around the time that uh, I started working with him. And uh, basically that's what it is, is. That's the goal of the promotion uh, when I was fighting for it, was to get guys noticed and get good fights and uh, try to get guys onto the next level. I haven't fought in it for a while. It's been, I think, last time I fought there was last March. And uh, they've actually changed promoters, so I'm not really sure, you know, what their focus is now. But I know that when I was fighting for them, that was kind of the, that was the emphasis on my fights was getting me fights that would get me noticed and get me up to the next level and put me in the spotlight. Well, when you look at the RFA's collection of fighters who have moved on to the UFC, we have Biggie Rhodes, Brandon Thatch, Sergio Pettis, Zach Makovsky. Yeah, they all ended up getting their notice from being in the RFA. So what do you have to do come the uh, RFA 12 to be able to really get noticed by the UFC? Uh, I, I, gotta go. I think I have to finish him, you know. I have to go out there and I have to get a finish. I don't think I can let this go five rounds, especially in Pedro's hometown. Um, I've got to go out there and I've got to look impressive. I've got to bully him around the ring, use my range, use my reach, and uh, win this fight by stoppage. You know, let, let me ask you something, Billy. I mean, obviously, you know, you're talking about the hometown. You guys are going to be fighting RFA 12 in a historic auditorium, the Shrine Auditorium uh, down in Los Angeles. You know, and another question here just about the magnitude of RFA and, and kind of where you're at. For such a young guy, you know, to get a shot like this, to fight in, you know, the RFA, but to fight down there in, in the Shrine Auditorium, I mean, does that lend any extra any extra aura of, of, of specialty to this particular fight? Um, yeah, I mean, in a certain aspect, you know, I don't really care where I fight or what, what venue it's at. For me, it's more about me and my opponent, and, uh, the, and the special part to me in this fight is that I get to fight Pedro you know, and I get to beat him and take his belt home and show everybody that I'm not just a stepping stone, that I'm not somebody 
to get Pedro to the next level. I, I feel like, you know, that's kind of the role that the RFA wants me to play. And uh, I think, you know, they, they want to use me to get Pedro to the UFC. And, you know, what's special to me is I honestly think I'm going to beat him and he's going to get me to the UFC. And that's that's kind of all the, you know, aura and, and specialness I need for this fight. I like it. So, you know, let me ask you here real quick, because you, you mentioned something. You think this is what the RFA is about. You get that sense that maybe they just want to kind of, you know, use you as a grooming tool here for, for Pedro. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, no disrespect to the RFA, no disrespect to Pedro. I just feel like, you know, uh, being a first-time RFA fighter and uh, being put right up against Pedro and in a title fight, I feel like, you know, they're just trying to get Pedro to the UFC with, with the way things have been going for them with, you know, Zach being signed just recently and then their well to work champ being signed just recently. I feel like, you know, they want Pedro there just as bad. And uh, I've got a pretty good record, you know. I've, I've had some decent finishes and I've had a couple decisions. And uh, I think that their mindset is if, hey, if Pedro beats this guy, he's 7-0. and But, uh, you know, I'm okay with playing the spoiler and I'm looking to shock everybody that night and take home the belt. God, I like it. I, you know, I, I love I, that I, fire. I was going to say, I love the attitude. I love the spunk, and I, and I love calling it like it is because you know we talk, Billy, to a lot of different people here, not just UFC folks, but World Series of Fighting folks from Bellator, folks from the RFA, and and sometimes you question the reason people are put into the championship uh, fights right away. I mean, why this was the choice here, and I appreciate your candor here, and I got to wish you the best of luck because there's nothing more than I love to see is somebody playing spoiler because I think you know since you're going to be down in LA, uh, that's what the Lakers are going to be doing the rest of the year too just playing spoiler they won't be able to win many games but they're going to play spoiler to a couple of them and I, I think you're in a great position there yeah i do too you know i'm excited and uh all the pressure's on him there's no pressure on me no one knows me no one knows who i am you know this is my first big appearance and uh i haven't felt any pressure so far and that's the way i'm going to keep it and Billy, for the fans out here, I would really like it if you could throw out your Twitter handle. It's something we're trying to promote here for our co-host, Dave Carney, because he just started his Twitter and has, right. has 30 followers. That's, so. that's right. Um, <laughs> Thir- 34 years old and 30 followers. You know, I'm a little behind the times here. Uh, so I was wondering if you had a Twitter, and if so, if you could do that and throw that out here on the air. And if so, any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, I do have a Twitter. It's at B Crash Daniels. And uh, tell him not to feel bad. I just started mine, and I don't have very many followers either. Well, yeah, I, you know, I tell you what, uh, Billy, I'm going to be following you not long after we get off air today. You follow me back, and we'll at least have each other, man. That'll be cool. Absolutely. Me and you. <laughs> Boom. All I right, just buddy. did follow on that right now, and I see you're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. Who is your favorite? Oh, uh, Leonardo. Absolutely. <laughs> Raphael sucks. Absolutely. You know what? What's with the attitude, man? You're but bringing us all size. down. But he had the size. He had the size. You know, he's too gruff. I mean, you know, always with the attitude. I mean, like, come on, yeah. man. Lighten up. Yeah. You know, it's it's all good stuff. Well, I tell you what, Billy, best of luck to you. Uh, of course, Billy is going to be fighting the co-main event, RFA 12, coming up January 24th, uh, just around the corner. It's unbelievable. Down at the Shrine Auditorium, historic Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, California. Billy, thanks so much for taking the time out to join us on the MMA Fight Corner. And we'd love to talk to you again after you upsert Pedro and take home that RFA belt. Sound good? That sounds good to me, man. I'd love it.